So hello, my name is Anne Tynan. I'm presenting today on the grammaticalization of fixing to in Defina. And so to start off, I thought I might cover a few questions that may have come from my title. The first being, what is grammaticalization? Grammaticalization is the process of a word becoming more grammatical. So a common example would be a verb becoming an auxiliary verb, like with the word going to becoming gonna. That's why the sentence, I'm going to the store, is correct, and the sentence, I'm gonna the store, is not correct. It's because gonna has a limited function as an auxiliary verb that does not allow it to be used in the same way as going to. And the next question I wanted to address is, what is finna? Finna is a or an auxiliary verb used in Ave that represents a, a typically abstract future intention. So an example sentence would be, I'm finna graduate. Going into my process, I had two main research questions. The first was, how did fixing to become finna? And the second was, how is its process of grammaticalization similar to that of going to? And the reason that I asked that question is because I had noticed that compared to the words gonna and wanna, which seem to be fairly similar in terms of going to being gonna and fixing to being finna, finna is very heavily stigmatized and looked down on, and I wanted to examine its process of grammaticalization in order to compare it and discuss how racism affects linguistic opinions. So going into my research, I decided to use two data sources. The first was the BYU corpus in which I used 100 from the historical corpus, which was from 1851 to 1968, and 100 tokens from the contemporary corpus, which was from 2003 to 2017. And then the next set of data was Twitter, since Finna is very rarely used in writing, so it was difficult to find in other sources. And I took 50 tweets from each year from 2009 to 2018. Each of these 700 tokens I examined in three ways. I examined their morphological function, so whether or not the B verb was included in the sentence, like for example, um, I'm finna graduate versus finna graduate. The second thing I examined was the syntactic function, so whether or not it was being used as an auxiliary verb. And the third thing that I examined was the semantic function, so whether or not it indicated a concrete or abstract meaning. So an example of a concrete meaning was I'm finna eat a donut, and an example of an abstract meaning would be I'm finna graduate. So going into my results, I'll start with fixing to. In the examination of its semantic usage, so whether or not it was concrete or abstract, 97% of the historical usages were concrete and 85% of the contemporary usages were concrete. So that shows a clear bias for it to be used to indicate a concrete meaning. And then in its usage of the B verb, 77% of the historical data used the B verb and 85% of the contemporary used the B verb. And you might notice in this slide that the auxiliary usage is not included, and that's because it was almost exclusively used as an auxiliary verb, with only one instance of it not being an auxiliary verb. And that usage was a little unclear. It was similar to how you might say, as an answer to a question, yeah, I'm gonna. So an example of a common sentence I may have come across while analyzing was, make him wait some more. If he so much as looks like he's fixing to leave, keep him in place with one phone call. In this sentence, fixing to is used to indicate a concrete meaning. It's used with the be verb, as in he is, and it's used as an auxiliary verb. So that is a very standard sentence that represents most of what you would see while looking at usages of fixing to. And so next is my data on finna. In my data on finna, I noticed that 55% of the time it was used for a concrete meaning and 45% for an abstract meaning. But interestingly, in the last five years, it's become to be more and more increasingly used to indicate something abstract. And second, in terms of B verb usage, it has been consistent throughout the last 10 years, but 29% of the time it's used with the B verb and 71% of the time it's used without. And while these two are both very different from the usages of fixing to, it does have the similarity that over in 500 tokens, only two were used to indicate, or were used as a non-auxiliary verb. And again, it was similar in that it was kind of at the end of an utterance. So an example of a, Typical sentence is this one, uh, finna do my best in everything I do. In the sentence, it's used as an auxiliary verb in front of the, wor uh, in front of the verb do. It's used to indicate a uh, abstract meaning, and it's used without the be verb. So what does all this mean, basically? I came up with three main points for what all of this data came to say about fixing to and finna. The first is that finna is much more likely than fixing to to indicate an abstract intention. 
The second is that finna and fixing to are both almost exclusively used as auxiliary verbs. And the third is that finna does not require the be verb as frequently as fixing to does. And this point is the one that I'll base the rest of my discussion on. So from this, we get into the more technical aspect, so I'll take my time with this. But there were three mechanisms of grammaticalization at play in this. Um, so this is explaining how it became finna from fixing to. The first is semantic bleaching, which is that the meaning became more abstract. It means something that's not quite as specific as before. Rather than a specific near future intention, it can indicate a future intention in general. The second was the most obvious, which is the morphophonemic reduction. This is the physical form itself shortening from fixing to to finna, um, which was obvious when beginning the project. And then the third one that I found the most interesting was the morphosyntactic change. This is the change that allows for the be verb to be deleted in front of finna in a much more um, typical way than in front of fixing to. It, this also signifies that finna is more able to express tense than fixing to is because it does not require the be verb in front of it in order to express the tense of a sentence since finna in and of itself expresses a future tense, whereas fixing to does not have that ability to the same degree. <coughs> And since I'm sure some here may know some amount about B verb deletion in Ave, there is a study that was done by Yale University in 2017, which has studied that B verb deletion in front of FIDA is different than general B verb deletion in Ave. So this deletion of the B verb represents something further, which I believe to be the amount it's able to express tense. So from this, I have some conclusions and some success suggestions on future research. So my primary conclusion is that finna is a more highly grammaticalized form than fixing to based on its ability to express tense to a higher degree than fixing to is able to. My second point is that more research is needed in its ability to express tense. As I've been going over my project again, I've been discussing with my friend Ian how much finna is able to express tense and in what ways. And what we've found is that it's arguable if it's able, able or not to express the past tense being used with the word was, and it's also arguable whether or not it can be used with other tense words such as will in order to express different kinds of tense. If it isn't able to be used with these other tense verbs, that shows a very advanced degree of grammaticalization because that ability to express tense is being shown through the fact that it cannot be used with other tense words since that will make it ungrammatical. And finally, to wrap up my presentation, I wanted to talk about my original motivations going into this, and that is how racism can affect opinions of language. While I've been doing my research, I have largely shown how the process of grammaticalization of Finna is very similar to typical processes of grammaticalization in English, and how the mechanisms of it being grammaticalized are very similar to other mechanizations in English. The continued stigmatization of finna is not a reflection on the word itself, it's a reflection on how attitudes from our society are being projected onto a single word. And in this case, it's how racism is affecting people's views of whether or not a view is valid. So for those of us in this room who are you know, a little more linguistically interested, we should be very aware of how our personal biases may be affecting opinions of language, because things like racism can come out in how people are discussing words that they like or don't like and their opinion of those words. Thank you. Um, any questions? Um, yeah, with the hat. Um, what do you mean by token? Oh, token, that's just one example of it being used. Um, yeah, right there. Hmm, I actually didn't look at that, so I'd have to go back and examine the data. Um, yes. I did not examine um, that. I only examined the three things: the B verb deletion, the auxiliary verb, and the um, semantics of it. So, any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Woo!